What's going on everybody? Welcome back to IYH tutorial. Today we're going to go over a quick start guide to Illustrator. So I know school has started, so uh, this should be useful for a lot of people who are just getting into Illustrator. Um, so when you open Illustrator, it'll tell you uh, basically all the things that you really need to know in the beginning. You can create a new file, you can open files that are existing. Uh, you can see the files that are existing down here. You can open new files in the preset format here. Or you can just create a new one. Say if you wanted a letter um, size paper, you can go over here, change that to inches. If I want it, um, you know, 11 by 17, I can just change that to 17. And you can change the artboard, uh, the bleed, which is basically kind of margin, um, as well as color mode. We're gonna leave this all on just default here. You can also rename your new uh, file. But let's just create something along the lines of 11 by 17. Uh, right away, it's going to look like uh, a lot of things are blurring at you, but we'll break it down and go through it uh, just section by section. So how I have my windows laid out here is the uh, essential classic. So if you go into window workspace, um, you can see the many different workspaces that Adobe has for you. Uh, now you can obviously customize this, but if yours, yours doesn't look like mine, I'm using a central classic. It's what is most comfortable for me, but obviously you can change that around. Um, okay, so on the left here, we have our toolbars. Um, this is basically all the tools we're gonna be using are here. They all have their own kind of shortcut key. So for example, the pen tool has P. So if I just hit P on my keyboard, you can see that I can start using the pen tool here. And then if I hit V, which is the selection, it'll basically uh, make the shape for me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. But these are basically all the tools that we're gonna use. Um, in order to zoom in and out, you have to hold Alt and then use your scroll wheel. I highly recommend getting a uh, mouse for this. It's really hard with just a trackpad. Uh, and if you wanna pan your canvas around, you hold space and then just kind of drag your mouse around. Cool, so down here we have our fill and our stroke, which basically just means what its, what its color is and what its outline is. So for example, if I go over here, make a nice, um, square by holding shift, it makes everything proportional. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this to the inside to maybe like a bright red. So you can see that the fill is um, the inside and then the stroke, if we click on this and double click that, um, let's say we want this to be a nice yellow, then we can see that it is going to, oh, I think I made two different ones, so. There we go, so it's gonna change this into a nice yellow color. Now, if we want to basically um, make the outline thicker, because you can see it's very thin, we can go on the, basically the property bar for the tool on the top here. Um, and then if we select this, and you can see the part where it says stroke, if we just make that a little bit thicker, you can see that already it's become a thicker line on the outside. You can also change the type of line, so, um, play around with this illustrator has a lot of different presets but just know that this uh, toolbar up here usually is for the tool that you have selected so for example if i have a text tool selected and that's just a normal text that it gives then on the top here it's basically um, how you can customize the text that you have so this is the font you know um, and then regular bold italic size how it's aligned um, so this is basically really just like a quick start guide and obviously uh, well, maybe not obviously, but um, you can also change the stroke and the fill for text as well. So if I want red text, I can go in here and change that to red. And you can notice that um, on the on the stroke, it's actually clear. So there's no stroke. If I want this to have a stroke, maybe it's black, then it'll basically create a outline for the, uh, for the text. Um, for this one, I believe you have to highlight this and then go into that. Oh, what? Okay. But yeah, so this will basically make a stroke uh, and then you probably want it a little bit thinner just to illustrate my point. So you can see that um, we made a red text with a black outline. Okay, now since this is like the, the shortened version of the toolbar, this would be like the full property bar. So now you can see that there's a lot more that you can adjust on the right here in, in, the, in the more extensive property bar. So 
Um, what, is, what is here is basically a condensed version, but what is here is all the different things that you can play around, uh, like kerning and, and things like that. So for example, you, you, you won't be able to do this on the top, but I can adjust this and you can see the kerning between the words or the letters, so sorry, has been changed. Um, so every single tool has something like this on the right. Um, so feel free to play around with that. So you can basically select every tool and you can see how, um, how this property bar changes as well as the property bar on top. Okay. Um, okay. So basically that is the left side, the top side and the right side. Now what's going on here with the quick tool uh, window is you can assign different tools that may not be readily apparent over here and you can put them here or you can put them in here. It doesn't really matter, but I like to keep them on the right here. Um, so things like layers, which is really important. Um, I like to keep them here and how you switch these guys on and off is you go into window and you can check on any of these guys to make them appear or disappear. So for example, if I want artboards, if I want to see all my artboards, which is basically the different canvas or like the white paper that you see, then I can switch that on and you can see that this will pop up and I can add artboard and delete artboard as I see fit. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and close that tab so it doesn't clutter everything up. But yeah, I have, I just have some, uh, very essential ones. So layer is a really essential one. Um, and, and color I actually do use a lot, but I'm just going to go over layers really quick just because it's very, very important. So for example, uh, if I add another layer and I want another, um, square on top of it and I want this one to be maybe blue with a stroke that's black and we're gonna change this to seven points, uh, maybe 10 point to match the other one. Okay, so these two are basically um, two different squares, but one is on top of the other. You can see that the blue square in layer two, which is on top of layer one, is also on top of the red square in the drawing. So that's basically how layers work. You can layer things on top of each other and you make, you basically make that uh, stack. So this is how people create um, different effects of maybe like one thing over another thing um, and hiding different uh, factors, just, just as you would see them in real life. This is a pretty good example of how layers work. Layers also help you basically keep everything neat and tidy. So if I have multiple, uh, Guy, multiple um, red squares. I can use alt to drag this and copy it out. And then if I have, you know, blue squares, then I can also drag this out like this and I can organize them in layers. So if I want to not see all the red layers, I can turn this off. And if I want to do that with the blue, I can turn that off too. So this is like the visibility button. Uh, and then you can also lock it. So now all the red squares are not editable. So you can see no matter how I select um, the red layer, nothing happens. I can only select the blue layers and same thing can happen here. Um, I can lock the blue layer and only adjust the red layer on the bottom. All right, so that's basically all I wanted to go over in this video. I have another video coming up next to go over uh, some of the more basic tools. So stick around for that. Uh, if you guys learned anything from this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions. I do like to answer them um, in my spare time. So I'll, I'll definitely get to every single comment. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and see you guys in the next one.